Hello and welcome to today's video. My name is Joseph. So, I am back from my holidays. So, I've been requested by... I'm gonna call him Sky. Sky C4T. Excuse me on the pronunciation there. Um, has made a request for a Dash video. Now, I've just slapped this together quite literally. Um, in the past um, hour and a half. And I'll just show you guys what it does. Um, before I get into it, you guys are amazing, thank you, the, all the good stuff. So, this is what I've programmed. So I've got a couple of walls in the player character. I can shift my player character around normally, and I can use the shift key to make my player character run. Please note, if I run into a wall, my character stops moving. So I'm making some basic assumptions on the game, um, that's been developed here that it's... X, Y movement instead of speed direction movement. And the reason for that is if you're using speed direction movement, you're going to be in a world of hurt for collision functionality, just as a warning. So, um, the dash function, right, is tied in so you can see I've got this line just being permanently drawn, so that's just working out which direction. And when I click on the mouse, my character's going to dash. And if I hit the keys and dash, I have no control over the player while he's in a dash function. So if I hit a wall, for example, I can't go through the wall. I can go around the wall using dashes, and I haven't got any limiters or anything attached to my dash. Um, so it's pretty, pretty straightforward. The way this works is a little bit messy, but I'll show you guys through the process. Um, I'll show you the sprites, as usual. Sprites are nothing fancy here. I've just got a wall sprite, I've got a player sprite, and I've got a dash sprite which is just me playing with the image. Just know it is 32 by um, 64, so 64 width and 32 high. And then I've just manually centered it. So I've just got a bit of space to play with pixels. Let's get into how this works. The wall, very simple, flagged as solid. Important though, because we use this information in the player uh, movement function. So I'm skipping the particle side of this because particles are pretty straightforward. If you wanted to add a particle effect to this, all you're going to do is you generate your particle effect. I created a particle video a while ago, check that out. I'm pretty sure the source is there. If it's not, let me know. Um, and then you'd insert your particles here and then every time you activate the dash, when I go through and show you that, you'd insert your particle there, you'd create the particle, then instigate a kill on the particle system after the dash is complete. So what I've done here, getting back to the guts of it, is I've got the player speed, I've got the player dash, player dash timer, um, oh, dash speed, dash um, direction, and dash direction tag. Just as a note, you could most likely condense de um, direction and direction tag down to the same, but I was lazy and just wanted to use a tag system to make my life a bit quicker. Okay, let's get into the meats, meat and potatoes of this whole escapade here. So, the way this works, and this is going to look a little bit daunting if you're new to Game Maker. It's not super complicated, but it, I'll explain what it's doing and why it does what it does. Um, before I do that, it's... F, F8. I've got to remember how to expand this now. Yes, F8. Beautiful. Okay. So, the first step of the whole function, so we're just going to ignore this for now, because I'll explain that in a second. I look at my keyboard, I run an ORD, and I can, basically this lets me use any key on my keyboard. I'm um, sorry, any letter is what I should say there. And I'll use the letter A, so I can just program in which directions I want. The next thing, and this was after much playing in previous developments I had done, I've actually found the best way to do a four direction um, game is to use a repeat set instead of increasing your X value. And the way this works is repeat, basically will just repeat the amount of times this action partakes. So if I say I want to repeat this five times, all that means is it's just five X in the perspective of the player, but in the perspective of the code, it's actually x1, run a check on collision, x again 1, so now we're at 2x, run check on collision. So this lets us um, check each step of the movement of the player to make sure we're colliding with an object correctly. Very important. 
Um, in the check, the way it runs is I actually run a collision triangle and I, uh, not triangle, rectangle, and I actually draw it um, one to two pixels ahead of the player. So X minus 16 and X negative 16 would dictate that this position is getting drawn on my X on the left side of my player because we are in the negative status. And you can see here I'm drawing it one pixels different. Six, oh, Y negative 16 is drawing downwards and positive 16 is drawing upwards, which will give us a combined size of 32. So that means I'm drawing a rectangle on my left side, one pixel wide at the height of my player on that side. Um, and then what this does, so I'm using the collision. If it doesn't see any collision, so if it doesn't detect anything at all, um, I'm saying it's equal to or less than zero because it should represent as negative four from my memory. Um, it should then allow the player to move one instance full, oh sorry, one instance to the left I should say. Uh, the next part to this, if there is a detection of an object, a second check is run, so then we flag over into this else status. And this runs a check with the same parameters, but we do a check called dot solid equals false. Collisions can pull IDs. So when we use this all tag, we can actually pull the ID of the opposing colliding object. And then I can reference the solid tag, which is in the wall, which is our opposing object, and see if it's active or not. If the tag remains false, the player will continue to move. If the tag is um, true, the player is going to stop moving because it's now collided with a solid object. I hope that makes sense. I know it's complicated. I basically repeat that for all four directions. Now the other part to this is I've actually got the dash um, player here set to false. This is important because when our dash is active, we don't want the player to interfere with the direction of dash um, as I'm treating it as a mm, skills ability for the lack of a better word. Um, so that's the four directions there. So you can see here, I've basically just got the four sets of directions. And in there, I've got the same kind of repeating co code. Look, to be honest, I could most likely plug that into an array and stuff. It'd be more painful to understand though. The next step of, um, step of coding I've done here is actually to do with the player speed. So this here allows the player speed to change between holding the shift key and shifting it to eight and brings it back down to two. This lets us use the shift key to move the player around and accelerate and decelerate as if they're running. So remember, like I said, I'm treating the dash ability as a skill more so than a function of the player. The next step, this is where things get a little bit more complicated, is how we activate our dash. So normally in any kind of game, you would have an ability tree or something. So this here, this mouse click and this um, check for speed will also need to be accompanied by some sort of tag or false flag to allow you to activate this ability, just FYI. And you would actually tag that as well inside the um, line direction thing I've created just to calculate the direction. So basically when I hit the mouse button and the game also knows that my dash time is zero, it will set dash to true, disabling the functions above us, and set the dash timer to the dash speed times 12. Important that this dash speed, this here, is a multiple, oh sorry, this dash timer is a multiple of our dash speed. If it's not, it's not going to count down properly and it won't disable properly. Be warned. <laughs> um, and then this in the way you can think of it is this is how many steps or repeats it's going to take. So if my dash speed, for example, so if I come back here is 16, that means it's going to be 16 twelves. So it's going to move 16 times, uh, sorry, 12 times at the space of 16 pixels or 16 X. Okay. So once the dash has been set and issued, this part actually is pre-calculated um, before this because of the way it works. So it's just to do with how the code is read. So I've put it slightly further down because I want it to be disabled so we can kind of remove any kind of um, slipping of code and getting something in that you shouldn't get. 
this here basically looks at when the dash is false, the it sets a point to direction, which is just calculating the direction based on the X and Y and mouse, and then it basically checks that direction against um, the four directions I'm looking for. I've done this the hard way, there are easier ways to do this, I'm just being lazy, forgive me. So, the var direction is equal or less than 255, and the direction, the second part is less than 315, which then gives us our direction. It also gives us a direction tag, and that comes into play in the next step. So basically this covers each of them, the only one you have to be wary of, as always, with Direction in Game Maker is the right side. Right has zero, which means you go from zero to 45, and or 365 to, sorry, 360 to 315. That's an important thing to remember, because you can't treat that one like the others. Hence why I've got a double and, and an or set in here. So... For anyone that's unsure, these are ands and ors. I should be clear with that. This is the or function. This is the and function. You can use the normal one. I just use that because it's just what I've known for years. Okay. So. This is the dash function. So the dash is set to true and the player timer is equal to zero. You'll see I've got the dash speed here instead of the player speed. It's the same collision check, so we don't even need to do any extra accounting for collisions. It's already pre-done in our code here. The only thing that's different in this code is this here. So this counts down the dash timer. So if it's equal, less than or equal to 1, it's going to reset itself to false, so it resets the scale. And here, the dash timer just minuses 1 from itself. The other thing you'll notice is I've actually replaced the keyboard function with the dash tag. And that's how it works out which direction to dash in. I hope that makes sense. So basically, when we set a direction here, so if I'm facing downwards, my dash tag sets to 3. And then when I activate my dash, it will cycle through and find number 3 there. And then 3 will be the active motion of direction. I hope that makes sense. So... Once that's all completed under the draw function, nothing ultra complicated here, thankfully. All I've done is I've just referencing the dash to make sure it's set to false. If it's set to false, draw itself. If it's set to true, it's going to draw a sprite with an extra function because for some reason image angle didn't want to play with me. So I did it this way. I call my draw player dash, my image index x, y, position on object, scale of 1, scale of 1, which is x and y, my dash direction, which again references back into here, which is calculated in this section, my image blend is just the color, nothing important there, my alpha is 1, it's fully um, visible, and my last step is I draw this line here. So again, this here, I would be attaching to your dash function. I haven't done that because I didn't want to go into the whole set of creating new functionality. I just wanted to show how you could potentially build a dash function in your game. Um, so basically in here you'd put an if statement and you'd go if blah and make this fancier. This is just a simple thing so I can see what's going on. This function here, which you guys might not be aware of, I have covered it before but I'll cover it again really quickly, just lets me set a length direction of 100 pixels based on a direction. So it just lets me draw a line, and I add it to my X, which just basically gives me a line direction. Okay, so with all that being said, that is today's tutorial. So, as you can see, I can dash into walls and nothing breaks. This will go up into the Google Drive, so you guys can access it as always. Again, you guys are amazing, you have no clue. Um, let me just quickly do a test here. In theory, hopefully it doesn't break, it shouldn't. And yeah, basically, you guys are all amazing. Um, feel free to join the Discord, I do check it. Um, like I said, I've been on holidays, so I'm back now. And yeah, I'll see you guys next time. See you later. Bye-bye.